Hi everyone. I want to just quickly share a strange thing that happened to me over the weekend. I was browsing through YouTube and I came across a video series by the Harvard philosopher Michael Sandel. Sandel is a political philosopher and he's very talented, an incredible scholar and a wonderful teacher. I've known his work for several years now, um, but this is the first time I ever saw any of his material on YouTube. And I was watching it and I was enjoying it incredibly, and a strange thing happened. Uh, I got a glimpse of his classroom. And his classroom is amazing. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I mean, I don't know what the room is on the Harvard campus, but i got to imagine it's probably one of the oldest, and it, it's just fantastic. It doesn't even look like a classroom. It looks like the Globe Theater in London. It's just gorgeous. And after I'd watched the video, a strange feeling started to sink into me. And that was that, well, I actually started feeling kind of inadequate. Not because, you know, Sandel is at Harvard or anything like that, or he, uh, uh, but just simply because of the the incredible beauty of his classroom. It made me think, my God, my classrooms suck. I mean, they're so small and so, you know, undecorated and so forth. Now, if you'd asked me before I watched that video what I thought of my classrooms, I'd say they're fine. You know, they're comfortable, they got good lighting, all the technology I need. I would have said my classrooms were wonderful. I couldn't ask for anything more. But now, after seeing this classroom, I started just feeling, well, you know, feeling inferior, feeling like, you know, gosh, this, this reflects poorly on me that I don't have a classroom this kick-ass. It wasn't just envy. It wasn't just, wow, I wish I had a classroom like that. It was the feeling of what uh, Alain de Baton characterized as status anxiety. I felt like I just didn't measure up. I wasn't as good because I didn't have a classroom like that. Now, rationally, I know that doesn't make sense. The, the quality of the classroom is not the measure of the teacher, it's not the measure of the philosopher, much less the measure of the man. So I realize that that shouldn't be important. It shouldn't be the kind of thing that reflects on me. I should be able to just be happy with the fact that I get to do what I love for a living and still eat every day. And, you know, 98% of the time, that is enough for me to feel perfectly contented in my life. But at rare moments like this, I get this little gnawing feeling that somehow I'm just not good enough. And, you know, I know I'm pretty sure I'm not unique in this. I'm pretty sure everyone has these moments where they just feel a little bit inferior. At least if they have a healthy ego, they do. But the great follow-up was later that same day, I was going through um, one of my favorite podcasts, uh, uh, which I'll link to in the side, called Philosophy Bites. Great little 15-minute uh, digestible segments of philosophy, interviews with big philosophers talking about important philosophical subjects. Um, and I hadn't checked the, 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 the backlog in a couple of months, so I was going through and, and, and looking at some of the old ones. And I came across one by none other than Michael Sandel. And he uh, had a pod, uh, a podcast on the moral limits of markets. And that name rung a chord for me. I remembered that Sandel actually gave that paper, like you know, probably about eight years ago now, at my graduate institution, and I was in attendance when he gave that talk. And what I remembered was, is during the question and answer session, I hit him with a question and I totally nailed him. I, I mean, I, I, I put him up against the wall and he did not anticipate it coming and he had no answer. And it wasn't just my estimation that, 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 that I had trumped him. I talked to uh, uh, at least two of my professors and several of my uh, undergrad colleagues. And these are not people pr prone to flattery. These are not people who are just going to say, oh, oh, yeah, you did great for the sake of uh, uh, building you up. These are people who, uh, as a profession, criticize people. So if they had anything to, to, to criticize me on on the point, they, they, they most definitely would have. But they, they didn't. They said that, yes, indeed, I had nailed Harvard philosophy professor Michael Sandel, and that felt great, and I had forgotten about it, and, and, and the moment I remembered it, that suddenly completely washed away my status anxiety. But that's equally irrational. I mean, every philosopher gets nailed from time to time. Every philosopher gets hit with a question that they didn't anticipate. I certainly have, so it's not like it reflects poorly on Sandel, or even all that well on me that I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and had the right thought. This is a really a, a fairly trivial interaction as far as it goes, but that didn't matter. And emotionally, it was all I needed to stop feeling so, so anxious about my status, to think, yeah, well, Sandel might teach at Harvard, he might have that kick-ass classroom, but yeah, I nailed him that one time, and that's good enough for me. I'm just a face in the crowd. Nothing to worry about. Not even trying to spread out. I'm giving a smile and smile and smile. Because I knew rationally that this didn't make any sense. I, I, I know that the... Oh. Hey, <laughs> Kiki. <laughs>